Good morning, my name is Dr. Courtney Hunt. I'm coming to you from Camelback Mountain in Phoenix, Arizona. I'm an OBGYN, now no longer practicing that part of my life, but I have a nutrigenetic or a genetic company where I teach people to heal from disease, neurodegenerative disease, autoimmune disease, things like Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, lupus, Sjogren's. But back when I did practice OB, I was fascinated and I'm still fascinated by the moment the soul or the light or the jump start of energy starts the zygote, which is a multipotential stem cell that unfolds into everything in the human body. Please join me on this journey. I think that we have found this moment, the EPR, if you will, when light ties itself to the mass of the zygote in the zinc spark. Scientists are looking for the moment of quantum entanglement, or the EPR, of the quantum field with the mass of a human being. The zinc spark appears to be this moment. Neuroscience needs a revolution to understand consciousness. Where in human biology is the smallest amount of mass or matter that could gain connection to the quantum field? If we reverse engineer a human before the adult brain and nervous system are formed, before a child brain is formed, before a baby brain is formed, before a fetus brain is formed, before an embryo, blastula, morula, there is a single cell that has to, the potential to become everything in the human body. Theories of Consciousness Consciousness Electromagnetic Information Field Theory by John Joe McFadden. His theory states that the physical substrate of the brain must be capable of integrating information. In other words, energy fields are capable of integrating information in space. This theory proposes that consciousness is integrated and active information is encoded in the electromagnetic field. The Orchestrated Objective Reduction, or OR theory by Dr. Hamroff and Sir Roger Penrose, proposes that the collapse of the wave function happens in the microtubules of the neurons. The zinc spark theory of consciousness proposes that the connection between these two models happens at fertilization where light or qubits of information would overlap with or connect with the mass of the zygote. I propose that the zinc spark is the indication of this before a nervous system is ever developed. This would be the EPR moment that Penrose is looking for. During fertilization, I propose that the independent Higgs fields of the subatomic particles of the sperm and egg merge or entangle, causing calcium oscillations to be released from the endoplasmic reticulum in the zygote. These 250 mile per hour calcium oscillations trigger an explosion of 20 billion zinc atoms out of the egg. I suggest that the explosion of this zinc is evidence that a massive thermoelectric energy transfer has happened and that the zinc is the nano antenna that traps the new Higgs field to the zygote. This explosion of any metal ion is not seen in any other cell in the human body. The first law of thermodynamics states that energy or information can neither be created nor destroyed. Therefore, the energy or light, consciousness, that jumpstarts you as a zygote must come from and return to the quantum field. The zinc spark equals the first few qubits of information that come from that field when the zygote is formed. The universe uses patterns to repeat itself, a repetitive Fibonacci sequence ubiquitous throughout nature. We see this in the formation of galaxies, black holes, the formation of the human body, and even in the embryo. As the numbers in the Fibonacci sequence become larger, the ratio between the subsequent numbers gets closer and closer to the golden ratio, a divine number. This emphasizes the idea that patterns exist throughout nature and that those on the macroscopic level are mirrored on the microscopic level all the way down to the Planck scale. Let's begin with oogenesis. I'll recount the literature on the physiologic process of fertilization in order to provide you with a foundational understanding. The path to reproduction starts with oocytes made in the ovary during fetal development. During fetal oogenesis, meiosis I begins and oogonia are transformed into primary oocytes where they are arrested at prophase I of the first meiotic division and stored in the primordial follicle until puberty. Once menarche begins, a monthly rise in gonadotropins or female sex hormones causes the oocyte to develop into a fertilizable egg. One primary oocyte completes meiosis I the day before ovulation. Another way to look at it is before birth, the oogonium undergoes mitosis and arrests prophase I of the primary oocyte. 
After puberty, meiosis continues and a polar body or trash receptacle is created and a secondary oocyte is arrested in, arrested in metaphase two. Ovulation happens, sperm enters the vagina, and at the merger of the sperm and egg, meiosis or fertilization occurs and a second polar body is created, leaving a single fertilized egg with one set of genes from mom and one set of genes from dad. Studying human embryos at the moment of fertilization is a highly protected point in science. The bulk of this research was done in mice before it was ever done in humans. The larger the zinc spark during a human IVF experiment, the higher chance that the embryo will make it to blastocyst stage. Researchers can use this information to determine which embryo to put back into the mother, allowing for healthier embryos to be implanted and a stronger likelihood of a successful fertilization. At fertilization, the sperm merges with the egg, penetrating the corona radiata and makes contact with the zona pellucida. While the exact mechanism is not known, the current model explored in mice exhibits sperm binding directly to the zona glycoprotein ZP3. This binding induced the acrosome reaction in which an influx of calcium and cyclic AMP within the sperm head triggers a release of an enzymatic contents from the acrosome. After the acrosome reaction occurs, the sperm binds instead to the ZP2 receptor, which maintains the physical connection like a docking site between the sperm and egg. This releases hydrolytic enzymes that digest a narrow fragment of the ZP, or the outer crown of the egg, paving the way for the sperm's entrance into the perivitelline space and fusing with the oocyte's plasma membrane. A schematic representation of the fusion of the sperm and the cascadive events that trigger the calcium oscillations from the cell. Through egg activation via calcium ionomycin, ionomycin, or human cRNA injection. Experimentation conducted by Duncan et al. in 2016 mapped oocyte zinc fluctuations using selective fluorophore tagging. This experiment was conducted using 3D live cell imaging with a fluorescent green probe measuring zinc inside of the egg and a fluorescent red probe measuring zinc outside of the egg. These probes do not mix. Intracellular calcium levels were increased using a bolus of exogenous calcium, and within 10 minutes, billions of zinc atoms were exocytosed in a magnificent zinc spark depicted by a yellow flash as the red and green intermixed, and then a red smart spark or halo moving away from the cell. Again, these are fluorofluor tagged ions, and the light that's emitted is not the light of consciousness that I am referring to. Instead, what I am proposing is that they allow us to see the massive zinc explosion that indicates that energy has been transferred and has been trapped in the zinc ion as a nano antenna. This is the kind of like an explosion of a volcano indicating that something has gone on inside. Embryologists use the strength of the zinc spark to determine which embryo to transfer back into the mother for IVF. As you can see on this plate, it is the explosion of the zinc that has the brightest light that, em that embryologists use to transfer back into the mother. Thomas O'Halloran was the leading researcher on this paper, and as you can see in the upper left on this slide, it is only a few moments between the merger of the sperm entry and the release of the zinc spark out of the periphery of the egg. Meiotic progression from prophase one to metaphase two and mouse eggs results in a 50% increase in intracellular zinc stored in cortical granules. Zinc transport machinery is not fully developed until just before the zinc release, possibly preventing premature fertilization. Human eggs also undergo zinc sparks during fertilization, indicating zinc's critical role in the transition from gamete to zygote. The zinc sparks in human eggs were experimentally observed using these fluorophore tags. The synced calcium oscillations and coordinated exocytosis of zinc via cortical granules are related to egg activation and the cortical reaction to prevent polyspermy. Fertilized, fertilization induced calcium, oscillation, uh, calcium oscillations trigger this massive efflux which we saw before as a zinc spark. Zinc's interaction with cytostatic factor e I EMI2 leads to the release from meiotic arrest allowing progression to a successful zygote. Basically, when the zinc is released, there is a release on the DNA allowing that multipotential stem cell to develop. 
Recent experiments suggest that the zinc spark itself, rather than the calcium oscillations, is what is responsible for releasing these breaks. After this begins early embryonic development. After a number of cellular divisions, the embryo progresses to gastrulation. During this process, the cells migrate to the germ layers of the embryo, the endoderm, the ectoderm, and the mesoderm. These three layers will become everything in the human body. Up until 11 weeks of pregnancy, glands in the mother's uterus supply the embryo with the energy and nutrients that it needs to grow. This continues until the fetus is too large to become supported by the uterine wall, at which point the blood and nutrients are delivered by the placenta and the umbilical cord. DNA methylation and demethylation is responsible for epigenetic memory. This is tied to the methylation patterns <clears throat> that alters the gene expression without changing the DNA itself. You can think of this as like post-its on the DNA that allow it to know where to start and stop transcribing itself. Parental genomes undergo global DNA demethylation to reprogram genomes to form a totopotential zygote. The demethylation process is incomplete to protect imprinted loci solely expressed by one parent. The global demethylation is proposed to erase a zygote's past memory tied to its DNA methylation patterns. While it was previously thought that parental genomes controlled early embryonic development, in 2022, Tony Perry and his team at the University of Bath found that embryonic transcription begins actually at the single cell level. Immediately after fertilization, the sperm and egg genomes are transcriptionally silent. Dr. O'Halloran has now gone back to the drawing board studying E. coli and researching how the zinc de depletion inside of the cell allows for this immediate transcription of the DNA. Now let's move on to the evolution of quantum consciousness. The nerves are made of neurons and synapses that are driven by mitochondria. The mitochondria originated about 1.45 billion years ago through biosymbiotic coupling between bacteria and archaea. This endosymbiosis led to a 200,000 fold increase in genes expressed dependent on mitochondrial power or ATP or energy production. We developed from the ocean using sunlight to drive our evolution along the phylogenetic tree. The evolution of memory storage has been dependent on the production of ATP. Memory is our ability to transcribe and translate DNA to create specific neuronal synapses based on the interaction with our environment. DHA in the retina. DHA is an omega-3 fatty acid playing in a critical role in the evolution of vision and the nervous system and has been conserved across 600 million years of evolution. Core competent of photoreceptors in the eye or the core component of photoreceptors in the eye converted light energy into electricity from neural impulses. The abundance of DHA in the brain allows for synaptic evolution and self-awareness leading to consciousness. DNA modulates gene expression in the central nervous system and is highly concentrated in the retina. Sunlight causes polarization of DHA in the retina and it's theorized that this is energizing the key chromophore retinal and opsins for vision. Flipping of DHA is correlated with visual memory and the molecule's energy states allow for electron coherence and tunneling. Quantum tunneling and cohesion in the DHA contribute to three-dimensional vision and refined mental processing. Additional quantum mechanics and biology has been seen in bird migration, enzyme reactions, photosynthesis, olfaction, and the hydrogen bonds that hold our, our very DNA together. The physiologic effects of light in the human body include the body has evolved as an antenna for light or the electromagnetic field of the sun. Both the eyes and the skin interact with this field, including infrared, ultraviolet, and visible spectrum wavelengths. Photons trigger electrochemical signals that regulate the suprachiasmatic nucleus and the hypothalamus acting as a circadian clock. This also won a Nobel Prize in medicine. The mitochondria operate as sensors of the electromagnetic field and the suprachiasmatic nucleus, nucleus synchronizes the mitochondria and peripheral tissue through a molecular clock mechanism. Sunlight also regulates physiologic function of through the skin beyond vitamin D synthesis affecting neuroendocrine system. Ultraviolet light can incite signal transduction via cellular chromophores in the skin, influencing neuroendocrine functions. Sunlight modulates neural, endocrine, immune, and metabolic function through the contact with eye and the skin. These chromophores in the body carry light via electron excitation, leading to a profound physiological effects on DNA expression and organ system function. 
Therefore, human consciousness and physiology intertwine with the electromagnetic field from conception. As an OBGYN trained at UC Berkeley and UCLA and a non-religious person, I was always fascinated by how consciousness would enter the zygote or the baby and at what point this would occur. It was when I saw the zinc spark in 2016 and it reminded me of Messier 87 in 2019 that I made this connection. Let's talk about the physics. As above, so below. Uh, the Einstein field equations it predicted that we would find black holes in space and in 2019 humanity was given the first image of the supermassive black hole Messier 87 found by the Event Horizon Telescope. Microscopic black holes. The Schwarzschild radius solution of Einstein's equations also predicted the existence of a microscopic black hole. Targeting two particles at each other would focus their energies creating a mass that pushes gravity to a maximum. When they collide, they behave as gravitational lenses. They would have a gravitational focusing effect, focusing energy into light trapping areas, which collapse into a single black hole. Einstein pre predicted we would find gravitational waves from the merger of black holes in space. On September 14, 2015, Caltech and MIT researchers at LIGO found it. This won the Nobel Prize in Physics in 2017, and you can hear this chirp today. Next came the Higgs boson. The standard model unites a strong force, weak force, and electromagnetic force, classifying elementary particles into bosons, quarks, and leptons. The Higgs field exists throughout the universe and interacts with gauge bosons, generating the Higgs boson and tying particles to mass. The Higgs was identified in 2012 with a Large Hadron Collider after years of prediction. I propose that the Higgs field states of the sperm and egg at their merger transfer energy into the zygote through quantum entanglement, essentially tying the light to its mass. This is what you could call the original spark of consciousness. ER equals EPR. Sir Roger Penrose says that we are looking for the EPR moment that ties consciousness to the mass of the human. Albert Einstein and Nathan Rosen's 1935 paper introduced the Einstein-Rosen bridge or wormholes contortions of space-time geometry. Also in 1935, Einstein, Podolsky, and Rosen's paper presented quantum entanglement initially unrelated worm to wormholes. In 2013, Susskind and Maldacena proposed ER equals EPR connecting maximally entangled black holes with wormholes. This suggests that quantum entangled particles are unified through wormholes, potentially unifying quantum mechanics and general relativity. Space-time may be derived from the tapestry of quantum entanglement itself. Binary black holes can collide and merge, releasing immense energy in the form of gravitational waves. These gravitational waves, as stated above, distort the fabric of space-time and were first observed by LIGO in 2015. In conclusion, the past decade revealed evidence of a mathematically predicted macroscopic black hole in space, the collision of supermassive black holes, and the Higgs boson, which is a subatomic particle that ties light to mass. I propose that these patterns repeat themselves throughout the universe's symphony and that the entanglement of the subatomic particles of the sperm and egg or their independent consciousnesses or energy cause the zinc spark when they collide, allowing the zinc nano antenna to trap the independent Higgs field of the new mass of the zygote for a lifetime. This mass or multipotential stem cell then begins transcription and translation of its DNA to grow everything in the human body, including its nervous system. Additionally, every religion has a creation story that depicts a serpent, sperm, and apple egg merging, causing humans to fall from heaven, light, or the quantum field. Therefore, the zinc spark would also be the scientific unification of religion's creation myths, proving that we are light, tied to mass, uniting humanity as one light.